Ginger Imster, executive director of the Arch Grants, joins us. Ginger, welcome for welcome to. Well, how about this? Thank you for joining us on the Big Five Fifty K T R S. Thank you, McGraw. Thank you. Congratulations! Another successful uh, year of Arch Grants being uh, distributed overall. Uh, what are your thoughts about this year's class? We're elated. Number one, to be in a position as a startup ourselves to have the funding to fund a third class, and two, to see the diversity that we see in this year's group. We've got eight coming from St. Louis, so we continue to be true to our commitment to retain talent, but we also have folks coming from the coast. It's terrific to see two coming from San Francisco and three from Boston. Hooray. Tell, uh, yeah, and 40% of them are women-owned. Tell us, what was the deciding factor, because I'm sure there were a lot of great companies that didn't win the grants. What was the deciding factor on these 20? Yeah, so we looked at their scalability, and we looked at their potential for success in this market, recognizing some of the attributes that St. Louis has, and, and really looking at the startup ecosystem as a whole, wanting to recruit some strategic talent that we thought would be additive to the existing ecosystem. So... Now this is the third year. How have the first two years gone in those arch grants? Are we starting to see some traction with some of those companies? We are, and it's gone well enough for us to make a compelling case to our funders to fund a third year. Um, those first two classes, about a million nine in grants to 35 companies. Of the 35 companies, 32 are still in business, and of the 32 still in business, 31 remain headquartered in St. Louis. So we're thrilled to see the retention in St. Louis. Furthermore, those companies have gone on to create over 190 jobs, generate $6.5 million in revenue, and attract $18 million in follow-on capital to grow their businesses in St. Louis. Yeah, we keep getting uh, asked other question. Where does this ARCH grant money originally come from? Well, it's an open invitation to the community to invest because we have a tremendous uh, platform of support from corporate foundation and individual donors but we still need support. Um, we're currently in fundraising mode for next year's competition. Uh, next year's competition is not yet fully funded, and uh, I hope that those listeners who are compelled to join us will do so and give us a call or make a contribution uh, this year. 20 winners. How many people and how many companies applied for the grants? So we had hundreds of applications from around the world, and I'm not disclosing the total number of applications this year because it's becoming a deterrent for folks to apply, and I, and I don't want that to be the case. Um, we're very thorough in vetting all of our applications, and I never want the total number to dissuade someone from applying. But in the last three years, we've had over 1,600 applications from around the world, and our global representation in this year's class is evident as well. We have two companies coming here from London and one from the country of Colombia. Yeah. So once they accept the ARCH grants, what are these companies required to do? Yeah, so it's equity-free money. Uh, they're not required to give us a stake in their company, but they are required to take a stake in St. Louis. And by that, we mean they need to headquarter here for the full year that they receive funding from us. We hope that by the, the end of our funding period with them, we've made such a compelling case for them to stay in St. Louis, and they themselves have you know, created such a robust network of uh, peers and professionals in the space that they would never consider leaving. And if we're successful, then in the next seven um, years, I hope that by the time Arch Grants turns 10, we're really looking at a metric of retention. And by retention, I don't just necessarily mean the businesses, because success for us is not just an exit or an acquisition um, or profitability. It's also if a company is acquired and the entrepreneur stays in St. Louis, that's success, too. We want to see these people become, you know, a part of the fabric of St. Louis and stay here regardless of their business. Ginger, are there any other metropolitan areas doing anything like this? There are, and it's interesting to see the, 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 country, the areas of the country that are starting to do it. So in New York, there's a competition. Um, St. Louis remains unique in that we really do look at a robust uh, offering beyond the grants to include our pro bono service providers uh, who provide pro bono services along the lines of accounting, legal work, that kind of thing to really help ensure that the companies can be successful. The other thing that St. Louis has is we have the Missouri Technology Corporation, um, which is a statewide initiative to help invest in early stage business development. And we've been able to leverage that for our grants um, alone, but seven of our companies have gone on to apply for and receive funding from Missouri Technology Corporation. So those those components of our program remain unique, and, and also the fact that we don't take an equity stake in the companies. That's still 
makes us one of the, the few competitions where we don't require folks to give us a piece of their company. It's uh, a great story, and it's great for St. Louis. And, you know, all you really need is one of these companies over the next couple of years to, quote, unquote, pop. And it'll be well worth it for generations to come. We do, and we feel the same way in McGraw. Thank you for uh, paying attention to it. We're really proud of what this initiative is for St. Louis and what we think the potential will be in the next seven years. Ginger Imster, Executive Director of the Arch Grants. Go to archgrants.org to see this year's 20 winners. Ginger, thanks for checking in. Thanks so much. You got it. 758, Big 550, KTRS.